hello, how are you? I hope you're keeping up with merchandising operations. This is class 17 if you're in Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes, and this is 12B if you're Tuesday, Thursday. So still class 12, the second video, Tuesday, Thursday, folks. So we're picking up again with merchandising operations. Um, we're going to learn about inventory systems. So we've learned so far that retailers purchase inventory from vendors and they turn around and sell inventory to customers. So it's important to keep that purchase and sale thing distinguished because, you know, as, we'll, as we have learned and will learn, there's purchase discounts and purchase returns, but then when you deal with customers, there's going to be sales discounts and sales returns, so don't get those guys confused. Purchase from a vendor, sell to a customer. All right. Now, in a merchandising firm, uh, super important to keep good track of inventory, right? So we learned uh, last video that there's this kind of inventory called periodic that we're not going to do. So anything in this chapter on periodic, don't worry about it because we're not going to do that kind of accounting. All right, we're going to assume that as we sell something, we're going to keep track of it. And every time we sell it, we reduce our inventory. So this is what we call perpetual inventory. So we're going to start learning how sales are recorded in a perpetual inventory system. After a company buys merchandise inventory, the next step is to sell the goods. At the time of sale, two entries must be recorded in the perpetual inventory system. One entry records the sales revenue and the cash or account receivable uh, at the time of the sale. The second entry records cost of goods sold, right? It debits the expense and reduces the merchandise inventory. Credit the asset. Sales revenue is the amount that a merchandiser earns from selling its merchandiser. So, so instead of having just one thing go on in a perpetual inventory system, you have two things going on for every sale. One, you record the sale, which pretty much is like it was for a service, but we have sales revenue um, and cash instead of service revenue and cash, or sales revenue and account receivable instead of service revenue and account So that part's the same, right? We recognize the revenue and we increase the asset that goes with it, either cash or account receivable. But then we have to take care of the inventory part, right? Because if we sold some inventory, we no longer have it. So we have to get that inventory out of our stock and then recognize that that was an expense, what the expense we call a cost of goods sold. All right, so that's what we're doing. So let's imagine we sold some inventory. So we're still smart touch learning. And let's imagine that we sold two of those tablet computers, all right? So we sold them. And when we sell, um, we might have a sales invoice, right? A sales invoice is an agreement between buyer and seller. To the seller, a sales invoice is a bill that shows what amount the customer must pay. So here you go, sales invoice, we made a sale. Customer's gonna pay $1,000. Two tablets, 500 each, 1,000. All right, so. How do we put that on the books? Well, um, if you'll recall, uh, important thing to remember, remember we bought the hundred for 35,000. Those, those tablets cost us 350 each, right? So that's an that's important thing to remember before we get into this. So. Um, here's the transaction, right? Cash increase, right? They paid us cash, $1,000. Sales revenue, $1,000. So this should look fine. The only difference might be instead of service revenue, it says sales revenue, right? But still the same thing. Now, great, we made a cash sale. Uh, however, this is new, right? Cost of goods sold, 700 Merchandise inventory, this is where we're reducing the cost of goods sold and reducing the merchandise inventory. So remember, we can sell stuff for more than we paid for it. We hope to. That's how we're going to get our profit. So cash and sales revenue are at what we sold them out. But 
we only have these computers in here in inventory at three fifty a piece, so we can only use cost of goods sold at that three fifty a piece, so that's seven hundred. When we sell items to customers, we must record two journal entries. In this case, we see that Smart Touch Learning sold $1,000 worth of goods to a customer for cash of $1,000. The goods sold by Smart Touch Learning cost $700. Here we go, here's another sale. Smart Touch Learning sold 10 tablets at $500 each with a term of 210 net 30. So here they're giving some terms, 210 net 30 on June 21st. The goods cost 3500 right? So 10 times 350, 3500 goods. All right, so in this case, we're not getting cash. We're going to have a receivable. That's, that's not too hard to understand. We've done receivables before. So we made a sale. So there's sales revenue is credit, right? Revenue on the right. That doesn't change just because this is a store. Revenues are always credits. Account receivables and asset increases with a debit, so accounts receivable debit, sales revenue credit, fit five thousand. So even though we're doing two ten net thirty, we're recording the full amount because we don't know if they're going to take that discount or not, right? So we're going to record it at the full amount because we've earned the revenue. Um, two transactions, so we got to take care of the inventory, right? Because we no longer have those ten tablets. Right, so cost of goods sold is the expense, right? Cost of goods sold is the expense. Expenses are always debit, so cost of goods sold, debit, uh, 3500 Merchandise inventory, 3500 Go back. Um, Smart Touch Learning sold 10 tablets for 500 each, making a $5,000 sale on account with terms 210 net 30 on June 21st. The goods cost $3,500. Again, two entries are recorded for the transaction. First, record a debit to accounts receivable for $1,000 and a corresponding credit to sales revenue for $1,000. Second, we record a credit to the merchandise inventory account, $3,500, along with a corresponding debit to cost of goods sold. So, sometimes people accept those sales discounts, right? I mean, they can be a pretty good deal. We sold those other, those computers on account for 210 net 30. Many sellers offer customers a discount for early payment. Sales discounts, remember, if we sell it to a customer, it's a sale, so it's a sales discount. Sales discounts decrease the net amount of revenue earned on sales. The sales discount account is a contra account to sales revenue. Sales discounts is a contra revenue account and has a normal debit balance. So remember how we had a contra account for accumulated depreciation? Same thing with sales discounts because we want to track it separately. Right? We want to track our full sale, right? Because we sold them at full price, but then we have to reduce that somehow. We'll have to net that out. And so we do that using the contra account sales discounts. Because, well, that's a thing we'd want to track. Like if we're giving away a lot of sales discounts and it's cutting into our, our net income or something, we might want to know that. So we're going to track those sales discounts separately because if you just take it out of the sales revenue, you can't tell how much was real revenue and how much was discount. So we keep track of it separately. So let's assume that the customer paid and they accepted the discount. That's what's happening here. All right. So cash, so this, we had to calculate the discount first. 5,000 times 2% is 100 bucks. So cash, the customer obviously paid us $4,900, right? Because they didn't pay us the whole 5,000. They only paid us cash minus the discount. So 4,900 cash, 100 discount, sale discount. Don't forget, sales discount, that's important. You can't just write discount, because we won't know if it's purchase or sale. Sales discount, and then take the whole account receivable away because they no longer owe us anything, right? So we take that whole receivable away and then our debits equal our credits, 5000 All right, sometimes customers return stuff or just like we might receive something broken and need a purchase allowance, maybe customers return something and want a sale allowance. So, um, sales returns. Uh, and allowances, kind of the same same idea. After making a sale, Smart Touch 
Learning may have a customer that returns goods asking for a refund or a credit to the customer's account. Or the company may instead grant a sales allowance to encourage the customer to accept the non-standard goods. Such an allowance reduces future cash collected from the customer. Sales returns and allowances decrease the seller's receivable from a customer's return of merchandise or from granting the customer an allowance from the amount owed to the seller. If we need to accept a return in a perpetual system, we also need to make two entries. The first will show the reduction in the accounts receivable with the corresponding entry in sales returns and allowances. Sales returns and allowances. The second entry will show the merchandise inventory being restocked with the returned merchandise with a corresponding entry to cost of goods sold. Right? So again, sort of the opposite of a sale. We're reducing that receivable, we're returning the inventory, and so we're accounting for that. And so here's what that would look like. When uh, recording a return of merchandise, you must record two journal entries. One to record the sales return, decrease the receivable, and the other to update the merchandise inventory account for the cost of the merchandise return. So, here you go. So instead of reducing our sales, Right, so we don't touch the revenue account. We want to track these separately because what if we're getting a lot of returns? That might give us some good information. So we track them separately. We don't just return it. To we don't just take it off revenue. So sales returns and allowances are debit. Accounts receivable is our credit. Right, they no longer owe it to us. Right, that customer is not going to pay us that. So we have to take it off the receivable. So sales returns and allowances and accounts receivable. Then we get those tablets back, assuming they're good. Uh, we'll put them back in inventory. So our inventory increases by uh, the tablets and our cost of goods sold decreases by the tablets because we didn't really sell them. So this is just kind of the opposite of a sale. The only difference is instead of having sales revenue, you have sales returns and allowance. That's really the only difference. It's just the opposite of a sale. Alright, so let's imagine we have an allowance Right, so an allowance is when they say, hey, we wanted a deluxe tablet and you sent us the regular tablet. And you say, oh, oh, we're sorry. Hey, well, if you go ahead and keep those regular tablets, we'll just give you an allowance on them. Right, so no, no tablets are coming back. So there's no merchandise. So there's really just one thing to do. Um, that's the allowance and the account receivable. Right, in other words, they're not returning the merchandise inventory. So, so we just debit the allowance, credit the receivable, customer's happy they no longer owe it, so we make only one journal entry. So let's imagine that uh, the um, customer wants to accept that discount. Remember we offered them 210 net 30? So, um, but let's suppose they had the sales return. Right? So, how do we figure that? Well, um, we have to take out that stuff that they we allowed. Right? So, um, in this example, the account receivable is at 3400 now. So, if you'll recall, we uh, had that $100 allowance. Right? So, um, we're going to just pay off that receivable, which is now at $3,400. Um, the discount needs to be based on that $3,400, right? Not the stuff they returned. And so that means it's $68. So cash, the customer has to pay us $3,332, and the discount is $68. So if sales returns and allowances occur before the discount period has expired, any discount allowed would be calculated net of the returns and allowance. And remember, transportation costs happen when you make a sale, so you have to figure out who's going to pay for it. Um, when, uh, when the seller pays for freight out, we call that freight out, right? So freight out is a selling expense, right? So we're going to keep that separate, call it delivery expense, all right? So in this case, 
on the sale there was a thirty dollar charge to deliver it and Smart Touch paid it. They didn't make the customer paid it. So it was freight out. Freight out means going out. Uh, freight in means when you make a purchase. Freight out is when there's a sale. So freight out expense is one, is one in which the seller pays freight charges to ship goods to customers. Freight out is a delivery expense to the seller. So Smart Touch sold some stuff and they paid the shipping. So you have that expense, delivery expense, and you paid cash for it. So you decrease cash. Net sales revenue and gross profit. So remember, we had several things going on, right? So we had net sales revenue. Remember, we had um, some returns, some allowances, some discounts. Um, so we have to account for that stuff, all right? So net sales revenue is calculated as sales revenue, less sales returns and allowances, and sales discounts. So you take your net, your sales revenue minus returns and allowances minus discounts, and it tells you net sales revenue. Net sales revenue is the amount the company has earned on sales of merchandise inventory after returns and allowances and discounts have been taken out. So let's look at how this looks. All right, for the year, Smart Touch Learning sells two hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars worth of sales. So that's the sale. So every time a sale is recorded. We recorded sales revenue, but from time to time, people returned stuff or we gave an allowance because it wasn't exactly what they ordered. And then sometimes they paid cash within the 10 days to 210 net 30, they pay it, so they got to take that sales discount. So we gotta net those two things out to come up with our net sales revenue. So you take sales revenue minus total sales returns allowance minus total sales discount equals our net sales revenue. So net sales revenue and gross profit. So gross profit's that number I talked about we really care about because we want to take out our cost of goods sold and because those are the most important things in a, say, in a, in a retailer, right? If you're trying to figure out how well a retailer is doing, you want to look at gross profit. Here's my net sales. Here's my cost of goods sold. What's my gross profit? Then that's telling you the margin and how much you have left for everything else. But, so it tells you kind of how your operations are doing, your main part of your operations, which are your sales. After determining net sales revenue, Smart Touch Learning can then calculate its gross profit. Gross profit, along with net income, is a measure of a business's success. The gross profit must cover the company's operating expenses for the company to survive. So this is just how you calculate gross profit. So you take that net sales revenue, which remember, net sales revenue is revenue minus returns allowances minus discounts. So net sales revenue minus cost of goods sold, which we've been keeping track of all along. And then sales re net sales revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. So that would actually be a line you would put on your income statement because people are really interested in gross profit for stores. All right, so that's that. Thanks.